Hey there, .NET devs. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're outside for a bit. I want to show you what I'm working on. So I'm installing this Klima weather station. The Klima itself isn't here because it needs to be mounted on that little cleat right there. The challenge I'm running into is it needs to use Wi-Fi and when I'm out here, how do I know what Wi-Fi networks are available, what the signal strength is, things like that. So what I've done is I built this so that I can tell that. It's not in an enclosure or anything, but this gives me all of my networks and uh, their signal strength. So let's go take a look at how I did this. So here is the Klima weather station that's going to be mounted on that post. We've got a battery for battery backup. This is the uh, Meadow Core Compute Module, so it's got an STM32, an ESP32, and flash and memory on it. This is just a USB power module. Here is the solar charging uh, controller, basically. Got a GPS. And then we've got a few sensors, things like temperature, humidity. These are connectors for the off-board anemometer uh, and wind direction sensor. One thing you'll notice, though, is there is no display on here. The only thing we have for feedback is over here. There's a RGB LED. Now, if I want to put this out on the pole, it needs to connect here to Wi-Fi, but I have no idea what Wi-Fi uh, SSIDs or networks that it will see out there. I don't know what the signal strength is. So really what I want to do is I want to build something that I can take out there that will mimic this. So something that is a meadow that can show me all of the networks that are available, what their signal strength is, and then I can select one of those when I configure this in order to connect to that network and get a uh, good performance out of it. This is the Meadow Project Lab. It is very similar hardware to the Klima. It has an identical core compute module which has our processors on it. It also, just like the Klima, has an onboard antenna or a connector for an external antenna. Being able to switch between those two in order to, to determine if I need an external antenna or not is an important part. We have this same USB power here. This does not have the solar power, but it does have some of those sensors. Really, the important thing here is whether or not we've got Wi-Fi signal, so we can use this, which is a core compute, and the Klima, which is a core compute, so that the signal should be really identical between the two because they have the exact same antenna layout. The Project Lab, however, has a provision for a display, so I can use this to display all of the networks and the signal strength. Let's go take a look at the code that I used to do this. It might be a little small on screen here, but really what we have is this what? It might be a little small on screen here, but what I have is I've got three projects. All make this Y Finder solution. So we have a core, then I have a desktop and a project lab version. The project lab version is the one that runs on that hardware, but I did not want to develop a bunch of this on a embedded device because deploying to an embedded device and iterating for the developer loop is just slow. So I did most of the development on my PC right on the desktop. First, let's take a look at the main controller. The main controller is really the logical entry point. It's not the actual entry point of the application. It's the uh, logical common entry point for all platforms. The important part here is that initialize is called with an interface, this IY Finder hardware. And then this hardware, we create a display controller that simply creates the layouts for that display, has the list of networks or the screen that has uh, the history of signal, and it also has the ability to change that antenna. It also looks for our up, down, left, and right buttons for user interaction. And then it looks for action on the network itself. Most of this controller is simply handling what the user does. You can see it's a bunch of button press handlers. 
really all of the base logic of this application outside of the user interface detecting buttons and showing things. Really, the, the meat of it is in this network controller. This network controller is in the core, so it is the same. doesn't matter what platform that you are running on. And it has a timer in it that just periodically calls scan. You can see that here. And that returns a set of Wi-Fi network objects. The Wi-Fi network object exposes things like the signal strength, and the SSID. Those are the things that we're displaying. It's got more properties about the network, but really what we're interested in is the name of the network and the signal strength. Really, the BSSID, which is the address of it, is also important because you may have multiple networks with uh, the same name but different BSSIDs. The network controller is exposed through the iWiFinder hardware interface right here. So anything that implements the iWiFinder hardware has to expose a network controller. So I implement a different WiFinder hardware for the desktop and the project lab. You can see it also abstracts out our display and our buttons. If we take a look at the desktop implementation of that hardware, you'll see that it goes and gets the Wi-Fi adapter by calling device network adapters and finds primary. Primary basically just returns the first network adapter that implements the iWiFi network adapter. So it goes out and gets the first Wi-Fi network adapter, then passes that into the network controller. If you look at the project lab, it does the exact same thing. Really the hardware we could have passed in the platform either the project lab or the desktop, except I'm using a little bit different things for getting the buttons and the display. So really, as far as network goes, the code between the two is in fact identical. The advantage here is if I am on the desktop, I can set this as my startup and launch it. that gives me the network that the, my PC sees, the signal strength. I can push the right button because I have that defined here as the right button, which is the arrow on my keyboard. And this will give me a history. And I can go to the left, lets me change antenna. Now on the desktop, that antenna swap you can see that it changes internal and external on the UI, but it actually isn't doing anything. It is just changing the text. Whereas on the project lab, which supports swapping antennas, it actually does call an API to change those. But by creating this desktop application, it allows me to continually make adjustments to the code and then rerun it and develop an application quickly that provides all of that logic. In fact, when I was developing this, the user interface, this has a list, and this list box I developed at the same time I developed this application. So the list box control was part of the development, and I would not have wanted to do that on the device where I have to take 30 seconds or so every deploy. Once you have everything working on the desktop, you simply change over to your other project lab project. And again, you can see the entry point, it just creates the project lab hardware. Then the main controller, just like our desktop app, creates desktop hardware, and then the main controller then initializes. But the project lab hardware gets that network adapter and returns these buttons. So if I deploy this application, you can see here, it gives me all of my networks. I can select a network, get the history. So as I walk around, I can see the signal change. I can change back. See that turned red? I can change which antenna it's using. 
So now I'm on the external antenna. Back to the internal antenna. And the code for this is identical to what we have running over here. You can see this one has my networks. I can select a network. It shows the history of the signal for that. And I can change which antenna. So we have the exact same application running both on the desktop and on this project lab. This code is open source. I'll put a link to it down in the description. Hopefully you found this interesting or at least useful. That's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching.